first thing I want to ask you was, there has been a few reports that have been floating around on the internet and on Twitter suggesting that you might retire this weekend. Is there any truth to all that talk? Hell no. Where'd you hear that from? <laughs> there have been a few reports. Like, I've read a few stuff that Donald Cerrone might retire if the fight doesn't end up, you know, your way this weekend. No. No, no, no. Not even... Not even in my train of thought. So, wrong question. Well, that's great, sir. I hope you stay around for a while. <laughs> so, uh, moving on. Earlier in the year, you competed at UFC 246, you know, which was one of the biggest pay-per-views of the years. It was sold out, had a big audience. But then you competed in an empty arena, you know, at UFC 249. So, has there been any sort of difference in experience for you with no audience? Oh, the, the audience is cool. It's crazy. It's electrifying, you know, but without it, it's just like uh, early on in your career when you're fighting earlier on the card, you know, getting no one, no one showed up yet. So still good, still fun, still get paid. So uh, I don't know, man. It's the crowd roaring and screaming is just a different beast. You know, we'll be back to it probably next year or so. Right now we're just in a weird little area in life and, We've got to go in there and fight. So kind of now it's like fighting in a little back alley somewhere. Whereas opposed to out in front of everybody. So it's just same thing. Same meat, different gravy. Okay. Uh, so your name has been included in the UFC's BMF resume. Uh, I don't know if you've heard of that. But would you be interested in fighting for that BMF title at some point? <laughs> you know, I'll fight for anything. Yeah. They call me. I say yes. So, uh, But absolutely, man. I'd love to. Love to earn the BMF belt for sure. It'd be awesome to hang over the ranch. Okay, so one last question. So this uh, Kamsashi Mike has been calling out a lot lately. I don't know if you've heard of that. He called what? you out and fight out Kamsashi Mike. You know, who, after his debut fight, he called you out at Fight Island. Oh, okay, yeah, right. He called me out? Yeah, he called you out uh, after his debut fight on Fight Island. So... Do you have any response to that, maybe? Oh, no, absolutely not. I actually just ran into him in the hallway. So, uh, but uh, yeah, sure. I don't care. It's whatever they want. You know, it's, I'm down to fight anyone anytime. It doesn't. It doesn't make any difference uh, to me. So, uh, absolutely, he wins, I win. Sure thing. Okay. Uh, one final question from me. So, how do you see this fight playing out this weekend? The co-main event yeah. with Nico Press. I'm. Uh, I'm going and looking for the finish, man. So I'm coming to coming to whip some ass, baby. Uh, probably second round finish is what I'm looking for. Yeah, that's great. Uh, thank you so much, sir. And good luck for the fight. We'll go next to Gabriel Gonzalez with Cage Side Press. Hey, Cowboys. So first off, congratulations. New baby girl at the house. How's that been? It's all right, baby boy. Right, oh. River. Boy. Sorry, baby boy. My apologies. It's all right. It's all good, no worries. I mean, you know, it, it feels like uh, not too long ago you had the first one. I mean, does it feel like deja vu? Back to less sleep, more diapers? <laughs> Man, I, the first one I even had a diaper yet, so yeah, it's double diaper duty. Double, double shit. Uh, being a dad's crazy. It's fun. Awesome. I can't wait to get home and see him again, man. Uh, but I'm here to work, I'm here to get a job done and uh, support them. So I'm excited to move forward and plan on having a couple more of them. So we're going to be here again probably in a couple of years. You guys, you just had another baby. How are you feeling? I said, I feel the same. Ready to rock and roll. Um, was there any particular reason you took a welterweight fight or was it just, you know, they passed you Nico Price's name and you took it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Phone rang. They said, Nico Price, 170. I said, Sounds good. That's about how the conversation went. I mean, this is another one. They said it's Nico Price versus Cowboy. Everyone gets excited. I mean, you're no stranger to these, but do you still get a little amped up knowing, hey, this is another guy who's going to throw down with me? Yeah, I mean, I get more excited when I know, like I said, Nico's a guy that doesn't shy away, takes the grunt, and comes on forward, so it's cool, you know? And he's going to be right in there in my face fighting the whole time, so it should be fun. What makes him a dangerous opponent? I think what makes Nico the most dangerous is just 
He's like got the I don't give a fuck switch and just keeps coming forward. Gets hit, gets hit, gets knocked down, gets dropped, still tries to find a way to win. So uh, the dude's very unorthodox, very wild punches and crazy. So that's what's most dangerous about Nico is the unwillingness to just sit down and quit. I gotta ask you final question: the elephant in the room. Uh, it has not gone your gone your way the last few fights, but you're so, back. Uh, four of them, motherfuckers. How about that? And you're still back in another big fight. Is it safe to say, as long as you put on a show, that the UFC is gonna keep Cowboy around no matter what? Man, you know, um, <laughs> I think, yeah, I'd like to say that, but I'd also, on the same breath, like to think. You know, how many, I don't even want to think about losing it because it ain't going to happen. I've trained my ass off, I'm ready to rock and roll, but I plan on being here for a long time. I'm going to leave when I'm done. I don't ever want the walking papers, you know what I mean? So when Cowboy's done fighting, I'm going to bend my hat and I'm going to say, all right, boys, I've had enough, I'm out. I don't ever want to have them call my manager and release me, you know, that would totally suck. But I'm going to keep fighting my ass off. And like I was telling everybody in this, this week's to come, this fight's for me, man. All the naysayers, all the people say you've lost four in a row, you don't belong, you should be retiring like the first guy to ask me. I don't give a shit. I don't care if I need to prove anything. I don't need to prove something. This one's just for me. I get to look myself in the mirror Saturday morning where I go like, let's go, baby. This is for you, cowboy. And I get to go have all the fun I want with no expectations, no must wins, no must do's, no nothing. Just go and fight my fight and, and, and love every second and have fun and enjoy it. And that's where I'm going to be victorious. No matter how the fight comes out, this one's for me. So there's no no wrong way this fight can go. I mean, you got me excited, man. Congrats again on the baby boy and good luck. <laughs> you got it. We'll go next to Mike Bond with USA Today. Uh, congrats, hey dog, congrats on the little one. Thank uh, you. It came a few days early, right? It was originally supposed to be the 23rd? Yeah, it came yeah, like a week and a half early. He's a week old today, so yeah. Came early. Must have got excited. <laughs> so, I mean, probably a little bit of a surprise expecting to maybe go back to that after the fight instead of dealing with it before. What have the past few days been like? Yeah, well, to be honest, I was more worried about it happening while I was at fight week. Like, that was when I was like, man, mama's going to get, like, worked up and baby's going to come, you know? And so, man, that, that kind of is all over now. Now it's just time to have fun. So, I don't, and not a care in the world to worry about. That's all away and i'm ready to rock that's awesome and i know you said you trained hard for this one i believe one of your coaches told espn that this is the first camp in a while where you did pretty consistent sparring uh can you talk about that a little and why that was made and how you feel about it you know the anthony pettis fight really kind of got me um excited about training and having a good time with the whole training and sparring and fighting and jiu-jitsu and and uh so I was already in the kind of a good place. And then we had these new group of kids that had been coming up and training at the ranch. And the young new fighters, they love sparring. So that's what we did. A lot of sparring, a lot of training, a lot of playing. And it like relit like a kindling fire that I had. I'm like, man, I would look forward to those days again. I'd look forward to having fun. And uh, such a weird career path, this fighting game, man. Uh, but... You never know, man. So my message to Nico with all this in my sparring, my ready is, man, never underestimate the old man when the guys die young in this sport, man. So I'm still here, still fighting hard. I'm fucking ready more than ever. And in fairness to him, we talked to him earlier, and he gave all respect. He said he's preparing for the best version of the ever. So uh, it seems to be a good fight ahead. Um, and I got but, nothing uh, ill mill to say about Nico. My first time ever meeting him was um, – Actually, at Florida, we sat next to each other and we talked about, I think he said he has five or six kids. And I was like, God damn, you are crazy. You know what I mean? Five of them. Holy moly. So, uh, yeah, brother. Damn. Hats you off to you on that one. Woohoo. You uh, get there? You guys done with two? Uh, I want three. I want a little girl. And if I have a boy, I guess I'll have four. And if I don't have one, I guess I'll have five. I might be right there with Nico in five or six years. So we'll see. <laughs> Fair play. And last one for me. I know on paper it's the four losses in a row, but a lot of people thought you beat Anthony in the last fight. I know you know you were feeling great about the decision. Do you carry the confidence at least of coming you know off a great performance, a winning type of performance into this fight, even though the record may say otherwise? Uh, and the rec You know, it's funny. You guys aren't allowed back in the room with Dana uh, when he has his little fighter talks. But the thing he says every time is, 
Don't leave it to the judges. Been engraved in my mind since I've ever been fighting. So what did I do? I left it to the judges. So whose fault is it? It's mine. You know what I mean? I didn't go out there and finish or I didn't win in, the, in a manner that granted me the win. So, you know, a loss is a loss. I'm not making excuses. I'm not saying, oh, we should overturn this or, oh, blah, I think I won. No, I went out there and lost. And that sucks. That was number three or number four. You know, and um, do I have the confidence? Yeah, because I don't really like dwell on that. You know, it doesn't like weigh me down. I've been in this, this is what, 37 or 38 coming for the UFC. So I've done it so many times and I've been here so many times. I, yeah, those setbacks suck. They suck. They suck. But man, I'm, I'm ready to rock. I feel great. The energy of the Anthony Pettis fight like carried over into this. I feel good. I got the hunger back. I don't even know if it went anywhere, but I just, sometimes it's kind of hard to be hungry when you're full, if that makes any sense, man. You know, I started making a lot of money, started getting real lazy and kind of content where I was. Maybe it took getting my ass beat and wiped across the mat a couple of times to rekindle the fire. So uh, it worked. I'm here. I'm ready. So Saturday night, maybe you'll see a new improved Cowboy making one more motherfucking run, baby. Let's go. Thanks, Cowboy. <laughs> you're welcome. We'll go next to Cote Cruz with Fordham Podcast. Hey, Donald, can you hear me? I got gotcha. you. How you doing, brother? Nice talking to you. Yes, sir. Congratulations on the baby, first of all. I'm so happy for you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Let's get brash to business. Oh. You've been around the block in the MMA game for a while now. Twice, You've right? challenged for Twice. the title. You've... <laughs> You've fought for the, uh, for the title. You've fought multiple weight divisions. If you're, you've experienced the sour end of the sport as well, right? So um, you're a powerful name. Right now, yes. Yeah, of course, but I, I trust you can go hard tonight uh, on Saturday. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, there's so much experiences to draw from this career of yours. What was what was the best advice you've ever gotten from your in your MMA career by somebody else? Oh, to enjoy the journey. Yeah, enjoy the journey, man. Because like even me sitting here talking to you. One day this isn't going to be here. I'm going to miss this. I'm going to miss these moments. You know, the cutting of the weights, the no eating of the food, the hurry up in the weights and the anxiety and the pressure and the have tos and the did eyes and the don'ts and the should eyes. I'm going to miss all that. So my advice that I could give a younger me or my advice I could give these younger kids, enjoy the journey, man. Enjoy the moments that all this entails, right? The training camps, the injuries, the fights, the headaches, the this, the that. Enjoy all that, man, because one day this ride's going to be over. We're going to be sitting back wishing we had those moments again. So that's my advice. And what kind of advice uh, would you tell the new and up-and-coming fighters that no one ever told you? Well, it's a long way to the top if you want to rock and roll, baby, for sure. <laughs> 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 that's that awesome man. Honest truth, man it's a long way to the top if you want to rock and roll so uh the kids that think they want to just come and be famous overnight man sit your ass down boy watch because you got to know the thing coming you i want to sing too baby you got it man you got a little acdc <laughs> <on you. laughs> yeah so when you became a father of the mma community with this the rise of daddy Cerrone. Daddy. You had quite a special run, fueled, as you said, by the birth of your son, Daxon. Yeah. Is it fair to assume that the arrival of Little Riot is bringing some of that primal fire back? Come on now, I'm a double dad. Double daddy. One on each arm, baby. I feel it. I feel good. And it's primal, man, for sure. So, uh, it's cool. You don't know it yet, but Little Riot will be watching. One day we'll sit there and I'll be like, man, there's your dad. And And he'll be like, where's all the people, Dad? And I'm like, yeah, it's a weird. That was the same year you were born. A bunch of fucked up shit happened. And no one was like, I don't need to wear masks. And anyway, skipping forward a few years, there's Daddy with the crowd again. So we're back. <laughs> <laughs> well, about the fight on the Saturday, what can you say about your camp for the fight? Because I heard you on the last camp's uh, video blog, which is awesome, by the way. I love that kind of content. Thank and you. you spoke a lot about enjoying, you, you spoke a lot about enjoying the ride. About yeah. loving what you do. I loved seeing you with the awesome Carlos Condit in there scrapping with you, helping you getting ready. Oh, yeah. Do you feel this camp delivered for you in terms of happiness and fulfillment? I do, man. I feel like this camp 
made me fall back in love with why I'm doing this. You know what I mean? For sure. So, uh, am I ready? Yeah. Are we going to see a new cowboy? No. Same old bad, nasty motherfucker you've seen for years. He's just going to come out a little earlier. That's all. Yeah, baby. <laughs> hey, you've been around the the business of uh, of the silver screen and even a few movies. You portrayed Big Boy in Mark Wahlberg's uh, Spencer Confidential earlier this right. year. Right. Uh, this has been many appearances. Are we going to see you? Where are we going to see you next? Do you have any more TV or film related projects? Yeah, um, I got a big Western coming up. Excited about. Um, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be a famous movie star, baby. Something's got, I got to do something <laughs> to. Uh, I, I thought you were aiming for the stunt work, but oh, the stunt side's fun too. Yeah, I enjoy the stunt side. That's just because I get to do crazy shit. But doing the, uh, the acting is also fun, so okay. I enjoy both of it. Uh, won't turn any jobs down at all. The only problem is I got to tell the directors, "Hey, man, I can do this, but if the UFC calls and has a fight, I'm out of here." So you know, that's the problem. <laughs> Priorities, man. Last Priorities. question for me, and this is kind of personal. Uh, you said there's something. In seeing you and your buddies in the same equipment, you said it on the last video blog. You said it had some feel to it, and I couldn't help to wonder. That's a lot like paintball, a sport you practice and love as well. Yeah. I've been dabbling in paintball myself for the last 15 years, and I was wondering, is there any chance we could actually see you compete in the future on an NXL event? Oh, yeah, I'd love to. I just shoot all the people that come to my house, so I don't even know how it'd be against real people. But I'd <laughs> down, yeah. I'm like, I'm like I would love to see you there, man. You know what I mean? That's how I figure. I like the, the, the best of the guys that don't know what they're doing. So um, it's almost not even fair. I'm pretty sure you're the savage that runs to the 50 on the break, man. Absolutely, 100%. So I'm with you. I'll come play with you, man. I would love that. That would make my life. <laughs> Thank you, Cowboy. It was awesome to talk to you, and best of luck on your fight, man. You got it, amigo. I appreciate it. No worries. We'll go next to Ezekiel Bergonzi with Somos MMA. Hey, Donald, how are you? I'm congratulations good, for your new baby. What's that? Hey, congratulations for your new oh, baby. Thank you. So uh, I asked Nico Price, what do you bring that makes you a dangerous opponent? And he said that he admires you and that you bring a lot of experience. So how do you feel facing a rival that admires you? Like, how, how do you feel about that? Oh, uh, sure. But I mean, it's hard for Nico to say otherwise. I have a lot of experience. Like I said, I've done this more than anybody. You know, and Nico, he, he it's just like me saying he's a game opponent. The guy gets hit, keeps coming. So, um, but how do I go, someone admiring me, man, I, I, same as I go fighting my friend or anybody else, just go in there and do what I do, enjoy it, love it. Oh, so do you, do you know, a lot of fighters are focusing a lot of super fights or prize fights. Do you think that the aspect of enjoying the game, like you say before, is losing uh, in this, um, you know, these fighters, do you think that fighters should enjoy more what they do and not focusing so much on, oh, I need to jump to divisions or, or oh, I need to get more money. What well, that's that? what it all comes down to is money, isn't it? So I want to, you want to fight that guy in this because it creates more hype, which is more money. So of course, I'm not mad at him for that, but are you asking me if I think it's taken away from the sport? This is what the sport is. Big fights. Big build up fights and that's what everybody wants that's what everyone likes to see so those are the best selling because why the world wants to see it too they want to see this guy talking shit fight this guy talking shit and them get together so uh, i think you're asking the wrong guy but i think i like the big market <laughs> <fights. laughs> uh, and you know what do you do you, do you enjoy the conor mcgregor build up uh, because it probably was the the biggest fight of your career uh, Sure. In that point, do you, do you enjoy it or do you prefer a more low-profile build-up? Uh, I enjoy it. It's fun. Like I said, it's all about the journey and the ride, so I enjoyed the whole process of it. You know, it was fun. The fight didn't go very well, but the journey was great. <laughs> um, you face a lot of the biggest names of your division, like uh, Connor, 
Betty Snade. Which fight uh, of uh, your career did you enjoy most? Even your WEC fights, which one did you enjoy the most? Probably Razor Rob McCullough. I was the biggest kickboxer, biggest striker at the time, and we went in there and threw the hell down. So it was it was a good fight, a lot of fun, and uh, still to this day I enjoy it. What did, what do you change in your game plan from your last fight to this one? Nothing. Not a thing. I poured a little bit more fun, sprinkled a little more fun on it this time. And what do you like uh, about Nico Price besides the aspect of he always brings up, like he doesn't step back? Oh, he's a good dad. I like that he's a good father. Thank you very much and good luck. Welcome. We'll go next to Jeffrey Harris with 411 Mania MMA. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Cowboy. Thanks very much, and congratulations on the birth of uh, your baby boy. Thank you. Can you guys hear uh, all of these questions, or is everyone out of getting there? I was hearing all of them. Oh, cool. Um, so, uh, I don't know if you've noticed, but there's a new action figure out for you yet. Has Jack, has where it's yeah, set you want? Uh, are you going to put buddy. it all over the home? Dude, check this out. It's funny you said it two seconds before I walked in here. My buddy just sent me a picture from Walmart of him ordering. Can you see that? Is that... Yeah, I can see it. A little. Yeah, two. He said, look at that. I ordered two of them. I was like, oh, I got it. Walmart, you can pick those up now? So, yeah, I, I had no idea. It's uh, pretty cool. Yeah, you can walk into Walmart and you can pick up your own Donald Cerrone Cowboy action figure. So, did you ever imagine you get like your own action figure getting to do this? Pretty cool. It'd be even cooler to have your kids playing with them, right? Like, oh yeah, you're playing with daddy. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. How about that? So, hey, you, so what is, uh, so what is it like, you know, fighting in the quarantine in the COVID era? Are you getting used to it? Um, does it take, are there aspects you have to, you know, work on and getting used to, or do you feel, is it easier now? I'm just curious. The, Quarantine is what I need to get used to. I am not a sit still, be trapped in a building guy. So like last night being quarantined, like oh my god, what am I gonna do? You know what I mean? So that's the only part to me that sucks is all the quarantine. Like oh yeah. Uh, I know you like the action sports, but I'm just curious: Will you be getting like the the X Series X or PlayStation Five for the Cerrone household, or are you not much into gaming? No, no, I couldn't even tell you the last game I played. I've never even played uh, my own character in any of the video games. So I probably should do that, but yeah, I'm not a video. There's too much life to live to for me to play video games. Plus, I'm like a terrible gamer. So if I were to do it, I just it just get my ass beat the whole time. <laughs> it's not even fun for me. So I uh, I'd rather go shoot a real gun or go fishing or hunting or play on a bike. So. Uh, and if I can just share with you, uh, the one fight I got to see you live was back in 2009, WBC 45, against, I think it was Ed Ratcliffe, and you put on sure. quite the show that night. And I remember, I think in the final round, like, it was a small little arena, I think it was at the Pearl, and like, you, you asked for like, all the fans, like, come on, make some noise, and everyone was on, everyone just stood up on their feet, and it was a special moment, so... If there's something I'm, I'm going to take away from your career, you're like you always put on a show for the fans, and uh, awesome. I feel like that's your legacy. You're one of the most exciting fighters of all time, and I just want to tell you how much I appreciate that and how much you've done over the years and always putting on a show for the fans and giving us great fights. So thank you, man. Thanks, Mango. And Saturday, ain't going to be nothing less. You know, I plan on going out there and giving it my ass, so everything I got. I have no doubt, Cowboy. Thank you, and, uh, and good luck for your fight. All righty. We'll go next to Pablo Santa Maria with No TMMA Ecuador. Hi, Cowboy. Can you hear me? I got you. Uh, congratulations on your baby. Thank you. The first thing I want to ask you is if you plan to stand and bang with Nico or you expecting a more technical fight? Uh, I do plan on standing and banging, yeah. I mean, uh, 100%. That's what I like to do. That's what the fans like to see. Is it dangerous? Sure. But is it fun? Hell yeah, it's fun. So, maybe we expect uh, you win the 
night of the night bonus or maybe the performance night of the bon the bonus of performance of the night if you do oh, that. Yeah. Hell yeah, I'm coming for those. I want two of them, baby. I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> Uh, Nick said that once, uh, and asked him finish, uh, uh, would you like to do the same thing, uh, got an amazing finish, like head kicking him, or something like he does, kicking him from the ground, or something like yeah. crazy stuff? Nah, I want one shot, one kill, knockout, you know what I mean? Those are what I want, like the weird fluky... I don't want those. I want the yeah. He meant to do that. That was that was an intentional strike. Okay, and you will stay at welterweight, or you will keep fighting lightweight and welterweight. They call me and tell me they want me to fight at, at middleweight. I'll say okay. They want me to fight at lightweight. Okay, I don't. They call me and said uh, feather. I just don't know if I could make it. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I I enjoy fighting at fifty five. I enjoy fighting at seventy. Um, probably. I don't know, 76, 75 right now, eating whatever I want. So i just not a real big guy. That was my problem fighting these welterweights. They're coming from 200 pounds, you know, cutting weight. Where I'm at 55, I'm big. So uh, 70 is easier. Life's a lot happier. 55, for sure, I plan on doing it. Okay, I get it. So what's your prediction for the main fight, uh, Colby against Tyrone? And what's your prediction for your fight? Oh. Yeah, they're both great wrestlers, so they probably won't be – zero wrestling going on with us so it'll probably be like a pitter patter uh <laughs> striking match that's probably what's gonna happen but uh eh, i don't know we'll see if uh woodley can can knock kobe out and for your fight what's your prediction oh i'm winning second round yeah i'm going second round cowboy's going home thank you very much donald uh, it's a pleasure to talk to you and um, my last thing, would you like to send a message to your Ecuadorian fans? Hey, man. Thank you for the years of support, and uh, I plan on giving you very many more years to come, so uh, enjoy. <laughs>